Yes. This is a white space with, we're blackening it up. <laughs> let's, not, let's, not front, let's not front. About time, let's not about front. time, yes. I want to thank first and foremost every single one of you for coming out to celebrate the work and the life of Jim Dennis. Let's give him a round. For those that might not know me, my name's Kavena, or as I'm affectionately known to this community, Kav. And I recently encountered the work of Jim Dennis in 2014, when a friend, a mutual friend of ours, by the name of Elaine Lee, came back from Namibia. Between then and now, I've been thinking about Jim's work, particularly around Jim's positionality as the first staff photographer at the Eastman Kodak Company. About a year ago, literally last summer, Jim had a pipe burst in his studio, in his home and it nearly decimated his work, his negatives and his prints. That spurred us to thinking about what it means to preserve Jim's legacy as the first black African-American photographer at the Eastman Kodak Company. This is what has brought us to this point. At the time I was at graduate school and I wasn't able to finish up the project because of the pipe burst. I felt a little guilty coming into his house with some cameras. <laughs> but Jim was thinking about it in the same breath. And I want to give Jim an opportunity really to think more about what this moment means for him and what it means for posterity what it means to have this work live beyond the years of our mortality. So with that, I'm gonna ask Jim, firstly, just to start by sharing with us, the community that's here to support you, how you are feeling and how you are. I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> but yo, you know, I mean, I am overwhelmed. God! <laughs> All these kind of people up in here. <laughs> and you know, I, I mean, there's so much love, and I don't know if I can handle all of it. Yes, Good yes, God! Yes, 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 so, you, yes. you know, with uh, Kev, is questioning my Negro credentials. Because <laughs> he just found out that I cannot eat watermelon. <laughs> he discovered that I have an allergy to watermelon. <laughs> and he said, I'm from Namibia and I eat watermelon. What's wrong with you? <laughs> but I, I, I just got to take my hat and my off for cab. The boy. It's a trip. I mean, he dragged me kicking and screaming to, to, to put this work together. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out what am I going to do tomorrow? <laughs> and, and oh, amazing. So um, I, I, I'm just still discovering who I am and what I do and what I want to do. I'm still trying to figure it out. Meanwhile, I'm just <laughs> plugging along and uh, creating what I'm feeling in my heart, in my spirit. And I think that's what has sustained me all these years. Yep. I often wonder, how in the hell did I get, I'm 82 years old. Wow. How in the hell? <laughs> how did that happen? 
you know, I blink, you know, and I feel like, hey, I got to do this, I got to go to that party, I got to go to, I got to go skiing, I got to go sailing, I, you know. That's it. <laughs> All right. Very and time good. is just zipping on by. So what, what I realized, and Cab helped me realize, boy, you know, you're going to need something. And uh, you best start thinking about that. What do I want to leave when I make my exit? And I'm still working on it. You know, I'm, I'm looking, how much time have I got left? It's just zipping by so fast. So, I have no control over all that. All I know is that somebody's taking care of my butt, you know. And, and I'm just, all right, whatever, whatever you want me to do. I'm, I'm here for you, so I just try to take one step at a time and uh, keep doing what I do. Yay. Bravo!